Good morning, folks. The finale of Where Are We Going came out last night, strongly suggested you watch the whole series, and yet this morning we question if there's even bigger news stealing the spotlight. Today's news is one of the ones you'll remember a long time. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com, finding the last 24 hours on a star still trending towards grand minimum. There are no sunspots or solar flares, and the plasma filaments remain completely stable in Earth-facing positions. Unlike that Earth-facing filament on the north, the southern hemisphere limbs, from Earth's heliographic longitude and perspective, both saw plasma departing or at least active and dancing in the corona. In purple, the solar wind speed has plateaued and is beginning to ease back, and the reverberation geomagnetic storm should be easing today as well. The trailing extension of the northern coronal hole is right behind the thin plasma filament. Not sure if that will reach far enough south while the next hole appears at the left on the south. Largest quake of the last day was a 6.0 that struck offshore of Japan, pressure building after a long time without release there. Top stories begin with a star that refuses to die. Apparently supernova are not always one-off events signaling the death of a star. This one has blasted numerous times over decades. The October U.S. climate report is out and it is a lot of what we tend to see every month. Some areas were hot and some were cold. Let's note the southwest drought in gray, bottom right, presents the driest October in our recorded history where Cali, Nevada, and Arizona all meet. So where were you when dark matter died? It was exactly 30 days ago we called the flat line. Sure, there were still the two most important studies ever due out a month afterwards, but their methods were indeed known beforehand and there was just no way. Turns out that was correct. The two end-of-the-line dark matter searches, one from the Great Xenon Machine in Italy and another from the Chinese detector, have both come up empty, and these were the last hope after all space telescopes and the CERN facility failed already. Why a whole week after the paper releases to hear anything? Well, because the best physicists in the world have been chatting. They now admit they do not understand how the universe works and have officially decided to embrace other ideas in place of their version of dark matter. Welcome to day one of the end of simple, wimp-founded dark matter theories. They are done. It's over. Okay, now square with that quickly because this is something you can do something about. As most of us are concerned over electromagnetism and biological effects, and since we've highlighted students who receive praise for going where the mainstream refuses to go, 12 days, two sets of experiments. One was not subject to Wi-Fi signal. The other one was. Almost no growth. Mutated sprouts. 12 days. Folks, as I mentioned, the finale came out a few hours ago. Used my time machine to get a little help with that one from an old friend. Thank you all for the great responses on our first children's book. Great gift for the little one or your local library or school, ages two and up, and for the rest of you a bit older. Tickets are going fast, and don't forget to bring your student. The material is as exciting as these shows on YouTube and the student workshop. First prize is a solar telescope. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got the wind maps and shots of our star to close. Watch the finale in parts one through three if you missed them. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. <laughs>